to uh, tell you about how ultrasound has reinvented itself in the last uh, 15 or 16 years. Uh, and I will, I'll be talking uh, about these topics, uh, and I'll, I'll just go right into them. Uh, first of all, most of you are um, uh, acquainted with uh, two-dimensional diagnostic ultrasound. And here we have a, a picture of the heart. Uh, this, this is a healthy heart here on the left, and this one on the right has cardiomyopathy. So a person trained to uh, read these images would, would look at abnormalities in the structure of the heart and its movement and, and its texture. And of course, it's uh, real-time imaging. Uh, so here is um, an, one of the first uh, versions of uh, modern uh, diagnostic ultrasound. We have here uh, a, a transducer array, an imaging system over here, and, um, and a display. And then uh, we have uh, Dr. Wild, who is uh, some call the father of medical ultrasound, and then Professor Jack Reed. And uh, he performs a very important part function because he is the image processor and pattern recognizer. So um, I'm sure a lot of you are familiar with uh, some of these advantages of a diagnostic ultrasound, the fact that it it's um, real time. Uh, we can see blood flow. It's low cost, non-ionizing radiation, spatial resolution uh, of millimeter or less, uh, and, and a point of care. This is a very important aspect of it because not only can ultrasound now be brought to the bedside, but it can also be brought to accidents and disasters, and also is used in emergency rooms. Uh, 3D ultrasound is, is growing in application. Uh, so here's a very simple um, uh, diagram for an ultrasound imaging system. As you can see here, um, we have a, a transducer with a number of uh, array elements. And the array elements <coughs> uh, have a transmitter. The, the transmitter sends a pulse down to uh, a number of elements or an element and, cr and creates a pressure wave which goes out and is reflected off uh, an object. And then uh, the switch uh, allows the uh, signal to go into the receiver amplifier and then onto a display, in this case a vertical line with increasing time downward. And then the scanning operation is it switches uh, to another set of transducers to uh, do another line in the image. So this is kind of a a, a basic uh, system. Uh, more complicated, but very similar. Um, uh, we have um, transmitter sending sound down to uh, this person who some people think look like, looks like John Kerry. And, uh, and then the receiver switch uh, bring, brings the information back in, into a receive beamformer and then back end processing. So that, that's where a lot of the signal and back end uh, display processing is done. So now um, it's possible for you, if you, if you want to build an imaging system, to buy um, chips uh, which have some of these uh, functionalities. Now, how does ultrasound compare with other imaging modalities? Uh, here we have a, a cancerous nodule that's uh, being detected by a positron emission uh, tomography image up here. Uh, and the MRI doesn't show that nodule very well, neither does a uh, computed tomography image down here. But what is common practice now to detect cancer is to combine uh, PET and CT together. So this, this shows the cancerous activity from the PET image, and uh, the CT uh, gives you the spatial resolution of loca locating where it is. And here, this is an ultrasound image of the same a uh, nodule in a magnified view showing mechanical properties. Now, the takeaway message uh, here is that even though you, you might have one body, you have different physical representations, uh, different windows into the body, different physical attributes are being shown. Uh, if you put a position tracker on, on the transducer, like a little local GPS 
then you can take the ultrasound imaging uh, two-dimensional image and you can uh, locate it in a three-dimensional volume here, a CT uh, pre-recorded volume in the system. And so many of the high-end uh, ultrasound systems allow you to do this, combine these modes. Now, uh, I, wrote, I wrote a book on diagnostic ultrasound and I, in the second edition, I compared how many exams were being done per year. And uh, you can see that while in this uh, about 10 year period, MRI and CT have increased uh, their usage by a factor of over two, um, the dramatic increase is here in ultrasound and <clears throat> a factor of over 10. And this is continuing uh, to increase. DXR is um, digital x-ray, which has replaced uh, sheet x-ray. So it's quite remarkable the gain uh, ultrasound has on, on that often used technology. Um, and this, so <clears throat> some of the drivers for increased usage uh, are the uh, decreasing cost of ultrasound. Uh, it's a point of care, uh, usability, and um, the addition of image uh, interpretation or intelligence um, to the exams. Now, <clears throat> I wanted to talk a little bit about 3D ultrasound. Is there 3D ultrasound? Of course there, there is, um, and, and it's uh, increasing its usage. Here we have a, a one-dimensional uh, array. That gives a two-dimensional image. And it might have a, approximately 128 or 256 elements. Down here we have a matrix array. This is what you need to do three-dimensional imaging. Unfortunately, this one has an order of magnitude more uh, elements. And so for many years, this was uh, the prohibitive uh, in, in terms of a realization of a, a true three-dimensional imaging uh, system. However, um, uh, it turns out that at now Philips Ultrasound, um, they, um, an engineer who worked in my group at Hewlett Packard, which was la later acquired, by Phillips, um, <clears throat> came up with a solution to the, this problem. And in, instead of having you know, a huge unwieldy uh, system, he was able to um, condense all this into the handle of the transducer by inventing a concept called micro beamforming, which uh, does a, a, some pre-processing. And uh, so there are 2,500 elements in that matrix array. And this new one here, which is uh, to scale, which is much smaller than that, has over 7,000 elements, and the count is up to about 9,600. And the technologies that enable this kind of uh, thing to happen are Moore's Law, the continuing reduction of electronic size and microbeamforming, and also a novel inter interconnect scheme to all, all those elements. Now here is a, a typical uh, 3D image. Here on the right you see a surface rendered uh, fetal face which is very very close to what, what the face looks like when the baby comes out and three orthogonal uh, cross-sectional views. So the amazing thing is not only do you see the face but you can see the beating heart, you can, you can see all the internal organs and pathologies and sometimes these are, are actually uh, the fetuses are operated on. <clears throat> um, and certainly, one of the most exciting ultrasounds I saw was of the healthy beating heart of my own son. So anyway, this is a cross-section of the left ventricle uh, of the heart. Um, so now I want to say, uh, talk a little bit about what, what has been happening to ultrasound in the last few decades. So when I, when I started out uh, at Hewlett Packard in 1981, this, this was our first uh, phased array system. That was a, a novel technology at that time, but it weighed 800 pounds and we had to put brakes on it so it wouldn't get away from us. Um, a modern system here uh, well, might weigh under 100 pounds, and these are high-end uh, console systems with many, many advanced features. Um, then uh, Sonosite uh, came along and they invented the portable ultrasound. Uh, with, with, and you can see the transducer and the display and the whole system. Then in 2007, Siemens uh, 
came up with pocket ultrasound. Um, and there you see the, the, ult the whole ultrasound system and the transducer uh, attached. But even more surprising is last year, uh, Philips in, in, uh, introduced Lumina, Lumify, with, in which the whole system is pretty much in, in that um, case right there in the transducer. And there's a little a cord that comes out. It's a micro USB, and it plugs right into a smartphone. Uh, so the display and controls are done in the, in the phone, and, and, it, and the ultrasound is an app on the phone. Well, the question is, what next? What will happen next? And so you can see, for those of you who like math, uh, this is a, a limiting case of a volume approaching zero. Um, and so there's a startup called Butterfly Network, which has a number of ambitious goals. Um, and they want to put the whole ultrasound system onto a single uh, chip and uh, make it the smallest and least expensive uh, ultrasound system. And in addition, they're going to add uh, intelligence using uh, deep learning algorithms to assist less trained users. Um, I can't go into all of these modalities, but obviously um, ultrasound is uh, very good at, at um, uh, imaging blood flow, now at thousands of frames per second. And uh, multi-wave imaging is using one wave to create another. And tissue characterization is a way of looking at the composition of uh, healthy and, and uh, abnormal tissue. Here's an example of multi-wave imaging called photoacoustics. In this case, <clears throat> uh, we have light impinging on a, an artery carrying blood. The, the hemoglobin uh, absorbs the light and uh, causes a small thermal expansion. And that, in turn, uh, causes uh, acoustic waves to radiate out and be picked up by an ultrasound array. And then here, down below, you can see the, the, how an injection uh, is starting to diffuse out in, in, into, into the body. Um, another technological advancement, recent advancement is, the, uh, is fast imaging uh, using plane waves. So up here on the left, we, we see um, a normal transducer with, that shoots 256 lines uh, to create one, one image frame. So for a depth of four centimeters, that would be a frame rate of about 70 per second, uh, but uh, with a plane wave where all the elements are excited at once, uh, in that case, <clears throat> you can get frame rates up to 20,000. So this has opened up lots of new possibilities. Um, shear wave elastography. Uh, the problem, and uh, you can see here in, this, in the left image, with a cyst buried uh, in, in a tissue mimicking phantom, uh, is using longitudinal waves and it's nearly invisible. But by uh, creating shear waves um, <clears throat> through various methods, uh, you increase the contrast of the image and reveal the cyst. Um, and in this case, for this method here, supersonic uh, shear wave elastography, which utilizes this fast frame rate, uh, it can actually be quantitative and showing Young's modulus below. Now, an an another huge uh, area uh, that, that uh, ultrasound has grown into is interventional, the surgical uh, arena. So here, this is that same little transducer I showed you before. Uh, and now it's showing these exquisite uh, images of, of the heart. And uh, in a stroboscopic arrangement here, uh, and it's enabling surgeons to do very precise uh, manipulations that could not be done otherwise in a beating heart especially. Uh, there's also, uh, at least I know of cases where a surgeon may, may uh, finish something and then they use a transducer to make sure everything's working before closing up and that's saved lives. And the other thing is it's great to, to have ultrasound if you're missing a pair of scissors. Uh, also, ultrasound itself can be used uh, to do surgery. And the way this is done is that <coughs> A large aperture transducer uh, sends very intense sound into, say, a can cancerous tumor and actually zaps it away. And it doesn't hurt the person 
because it's very localized. And then uh, that's skinned until the whole tumor is, uh, is burned away. And so you can have walk-in surgery without any cutting. Uh, of course, you need a good simulation to do this. And this is an example of a simulation program um, which shows uh, a nonlinear wave along an axis, a waveform, and also combined with uh, temperature um, uh, prediction. Here we have another case of HIFU uh, for, for a tumor in the brain. And this is a, a hemispherical um, array of, of almost 9,000 elements. And, and to, to do this, uh, a CT is used to define the skull. And that's used to correct for refraction for all those elements to focus in one spot. And here you can see some, some of the results are very good um, with that method. <clears throat> Finally, I wanted to go back in history a little bit and uh, show that in the, around 1990 uh, at Hewlett Packard, we had what's called an ultrasound research system. And uh, here we have the front end of the ultrasound system hooked into some A to D converters and into a memory, uh, and, and then a supercomputer. And then we could create all the processing uh, in, in software, and we used uh, MATLAB software. And it turns out, here's a, a, a newsletter uh, from, from uh, that group, the Advanced Projects group that I was in with uh, Don Orofino, and he was in charge of, uh, of writing a lot of the software for this research system. And uh, so that's his article there. So uh, modern day uh, research systems are actually uh, changing the, the, uh, the, the uh, or making more rapid the development of new systems. And this is, <coughs> They're, they're also not, not only research systems, but uh, programs like Field 2 and uh, K-Wave um, by Jorgen Jensen and uh, <coughs> uh, Bradley uh, Treby and uh, Ben Cox. And these are simulation programs. But this is now an actual system which uh, could be hooked up and to, to do the measurements and can be reconfigured. So you see up here the, the transmitter receiver a to D converter and timing control and so on, and then a high-speed bus goes into several memories. The, this Verisonic system uh, <clears throat> is uh, interesting in that not only can you manipulate the different parts, but you can rearrange the whole system. So you have control o over the organization of the system as well. Uh, another company, Ultrasonics, is also uses MATLAB. Um, and, and they they've did, did some pioneering work in, in an ultrasonics research system. So in conclusion, um, you see that ultrasound, medical ultrasound is rapidly expanding in new directions and uh, combining with other imaging modalities, uh, producing quantit quantification. And uh, the in really interesting thing is this miniaturization of ultrasound is causing ultrasound to be distributed on, uh, in different ways and, and to expand into many areas of the world where ultrasound has not been affordable. Like those, those pocket ultrasound systems are, are under uh, $10,000, whereas the normal ultrasound systems are $40,000 and up. So it's a, it's a, it makes it affordable and uh, available uh, to, to many more people. Also, another area is um, adding intelligence to Im image interpretation for ultrasound, uh, improved simulation, and uh, with research systems um, that your imagination uh, can, can go wild uh, creating new types of systems. And, uh, and, and uh, Mat MATLAB has been an indispensable ally along, along this journey. Thank you. Oh, one more plug here. A lot of the figures have come uh, from my book. Uh, which, which is also a MATLAB book and has MATLAB code. Thank you.